I chose to do my final project on the Liberty ship failures. President Roosevelt announced that $350 million would be spent to provide a ship building program to build ships faster than the enemy could sink them. The US decided to use the method of welding than the conventionally followed method of riveting for shipbuilding. The ships were called Liberty ships. In addition to increased speed of construction, the use of welding also decreases construction costs. The number of skilled laborers required carrying out welding on the ship's hull and the deck were thought to be significantly lesser than the numbers required to carry out using riveting. This expedition of process from welding, although costing less, would prove detrimental to the ships. More than 200 Liberty ships sank or were damaged beyond repair. One of those ships ended up breaking into two pieces. The accidents were caused due to the lack of fracture toughness of the welded joint areas. The accident highlighted the importance of fracture toughness and marked the birth of fracture mechanics. It was clear from the nature of the failures of the ships that the collapse occurred through a brittle fracture. It was observed that nearly all the failures occurred in the cold waters of the North Atlantic, whereas the ships stationed in the South Pacific remained intact. The mystery was later resolved by Constance Tipper of Cambridge University. She demonstrated that there is a critical temperature below which the fracture mode in the steels shifts from ductile to brittle. The fracture toughness of steel changes drastically over a temperature range. The low temperature steel is brittle and fractures by cleavage. At high temperature, it is ductile and fails by plastic collapse. In transition between ductile and brittle, both mechanisms of fracture can occur. Thus, there is a region where the material is 100% ductile and a region where the material is 100% brittle in the transition zone as the figure it shows. The welding techniques used in ship production caused a controversy. There were issues with inexperienced laborers who had been drafted in to increase ship production for the World War II efforts. It was believed that the unskilled welding caused microcracks in the weld itself, thus resulting in stress concentrations which contributed to the brittle fracture of the Liberty ships. The most common type of cracks was one which began at the square corner of the hatch which coincided with a weld. Both the weld and stress concentrations act as localized areas of high stresses. One remedial measure adopted was to use rivet steel arrestor plates in areas of high stress concentration, thus preventing crack growth. The Victory ship was an upgrade in ship design that had arrestor plates to maintain a less stiff and stronger ship design that was better able to deal with fatigue. There are different types of brittle fractures, one of which is intergranular crack propagation, which is between the grains. The other is transgranular crack propagation, which is through the grains, both of which can be seen in the pictures to the right. A summary of the Liberty ship failures is that the material used did not have sufficient fracture toughness, especially at lower temperatures. The welded joints in general were poor due to inexperienced welders, which meant there were micro cracks in the welds themselves. And the all welded construction eliminated crack arresting plate boundaries, which are present in riveted joints. The big question is what could have been done better? Well, 
starting off, the experience of the welders should have been a lot better to get solid welds without micro cracking. In addition to this, heat treatment and grain refinement should have been done to ensure that the weld spots did not have concentrated stress and to increase the ductility of the material in these spots to make it less brittle at the temperatures that they were subjected to.